grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the, for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him, your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
reading is from Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory in God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bores forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits in front of the Lord. The Lord sits in throne as King forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O oh Lord, the blessings of peace. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented Jesus, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. You. you may be seated. <clears throat> Observing the baptism of our Lord, how appropriate for this day for Pastor Gross and his family. Pastor Gross and his family are in Chattanooga for the baptism of their grandchild or their granddaughter today. So that's why I'm here. But first, a baptism story. And, and then a Jesus story, too. Susie, a four and a, four and a half year old daughter, at the beginning of worship several weeks after the baptism of her baby sister, leaned over and asked her mother, loud enough for some people to hear, Mommy, Mommy, are we going to appetize Jennifer again? She had caught something. She had caught something about what had happened some week Sundays before there in worship. And then several weeks later, I came down the aisle at the beginning of the worship service on crutches, having broken my foot. And I heard Susie lean over to her me and say loud enough for some people to hear, Mommy, Mommy, what happened to Jesus? <laughs> well, enough of that. <laughs> love, love, love for the children. In this new liturgical year, we have been through the Advent season, waiting for the birth of the one called Jesus, which literally means the Lord saves or the Lord helps. And we have celebrated the birth of this Jesus and have focused last Sunday on the name of Jesus. Today we focus on the baptism of our Lord and, and hence also on our baptism. In a special and dramatic way, God the Father reached down 
and said to, Je- said to Jesus, Beloved son, you are mine. Today we focus on the baptism of our Lord and hence also on our baptism. Beloved son, you are mine. That's, this actually happened a couple of times in the life of Jesus. On the night of his birth, the angels said, This is the one. And then on the Mount of Transfiguration, which we will hear about in a few weeks, to Peter, James, and John on that mountaintop, it was said, Hear well, you disciples, this is the one, referring to Jesus. But today we remember the Spirit of God, God's voice booming over the desert from the River Jordan, this is the one. Jesus was touched by God the Father through baptism and the Holy Spirit. Remember, this is what, not what we call Christian baptism. Jesus' baptism is not Christian baptism. There was something different going on here. There had been a great deal of debate. There has been a, a great deal of debate over the centuries about how baptism should be understood and how G, uh, the baptism of Jesus should be understood. And basically the question about Jesus' baptism has been why? Have you ever asked that question? When we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, why, why did Jesus have to be baptized? When we read this, the gospel story that we read today also from uh, Luke and Mark, why did Jesus have to be baptized? In Matthew 3.11 in our gospel reading today, John says, I baptize you with water for repentance. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 3, it says that John's baptism was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. So if Jesus, so as we are told elsewhere, was without sin, why did he need to be baptized by John if this was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins? In fact, the fact is that we really don't know why Jesus felt it necessary to be baptized by John. Jesus never says anything about it in the scriptures. We're not sure. There are some clues, of course, in the story about Jesus. In Matthew 3.15 that we had today, it says that Jesus' baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus said to John there at the river, Let my baptism here be so for now, for it is a way to fulfill all righteousness. In another way, through this great epiphany at the River Jordan, Jesus fulfills all righteousness and becomes the servant of God who will bring forth justice, And be a light to the nations. Which means what? What does it mean to fulfill all righteousness? The word righteousness is often used in the sense of doing what God requires or doing the revealed will of God. But another possibility is that righteousness means making things right or making it right. Now if we use the image of making the world right, then wherever there are human needs, the world is not all right. And it needs fixing. It needs to be made right. And thus taking care of human needs is precisely what God would have us do in making the world all right. It is right for Jesus to be baptized and take upon himself the sins of the world To be the one who makes humanity right with God. And that's usually how we interpret the baptism of Jesus. To to say that it was made right because he was betaking on the sins of the world in his death and resurrection. It is right for Jesus to be baptized and to take upon himself the sins of the world. To be the one who makes humanity right with God. Jesus' purpose was to make humanity right with God through his death and resurrection. Jesus' purpose was to die and rise for all humanity, for you and me 
thus making us right with God. <clears throat> For in the act of being baptized by John in the River Jordan, Jesus was claimed for ministry. And I think that's a good illustration or good definition of what happens here. Jesus is claimed for his ministry because immediately then he goes out into the wilderness and is tested by the devil and then begins his ministry of teaching and healing and comforting and caring. You and I are the baptized people of God. In the baptism service, the congregation responds to the baptized. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. In baptism, we are joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus. We are connected to and, and given the righteousness of God to help make things right. And it is right for us then to be joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus. But we experience times when we do not feel righteous, when we do not feel that everything is all right. But still God comes with his righteousness, making us all right again. And so we live in that hope. It is a profound hope that we live in. You, we know about the pain of sin all too well. And when you or I, for whatever reason, will not live in harmony with those who love us and whom we love, when we do not respond to the love of God, there is pain, real pain, isolation, loneliness. But we, the baptized, are claimed for ministry also to bring the love and hope and peace and comfort and acceptance and forgiveness of God to others. Our Christian life is to be, live, to be a living out of baptism, learning to think and act in accord with what it means to be identified with the, Christ, with the crucified, risen Christ. That's why we began the service today with the affirmation of baptism, to remind us that in our baptism, we too are claimed for ministry, as Jesus was in his baptism. It's initiated in, we are initiated into the priesthood of all believers, which does not mean that all Christians are to serve in the pastoral office. It does mean that all the baptized Christians in the church and in the world are to offer everything they have been given for God's service. And then we are reminded that later in his life, Jesus would send his disciples out saying, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember, I am with you always. That is righteousness. And then you are my beloved child, he says. Go and make all things right. Our baptismal mission is to proclaim in word and deed the good news to all who are oppressed or in need of God's healing. We are to offer everything we have been given for God's service because we are claimed for ministry. Amen. May God bless your ministry. <laughs>
us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from true God, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith. Equip all baptized for your reconciling and redeeming work. Merciful God, renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect oceans, rivers, and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands and to communities without access to safe water. Merciful God, Righteous God, you never weary of establishing justice. Increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for those in military service, for peacemakers, and for our enemies. Merciful God, Abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Sustain health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crisis, especially Betty A., Don B., Sherry B., Ruby C., David F., Bill H., Lowell K., Pastor Joe, Paul and Catherine P., Vicki S., Phil T., Kathy W., Larry W., Merciful God, Blessing God, in Christ you gather the beloved community. Kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people. Accompany the newly baptized, those recently ordained or beginning a new ministry. Inspire ELCA presiding bishop Elizabeth Eaton and synodical bishop Kevin Strickland and all synodical leaders and congregational councils to serve with imagination and wisdom. Merciful God. We pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee, 
Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all who serve and protect us. Merciful God, promising God, your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ, especially Gail Burroughs, Walt Meller, and Pastor Doug. We trust that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Merciful God. Hear now those petitions and cares that we offer up to you, O Lord, in silence. We bring to you our needs and our hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand.
us pray. Learning God, you break the bonds of justice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You, you we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, by the leading of the star, he has shone forth for all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned into wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup again, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, and one God now and forever. Amen. Together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the meal, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him, and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Come and taste the joy of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. <laughs> Whether you commune at your pew or around the table, know that the words spoken here are also for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and give, strengthen you and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. People of Christ Lutheran Church, you who are baptized and claimed for ministry, what is our mission and ministry? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.